My name is Cecilia Berlin. I work at Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. And my research is in the borderland between ergonomics and human factors and design sciences. And the goal of my research is to figure out how to design the socially sustainable and ergonomically sound workplaces of the future. This SDG poses a very interesting challenge by putting together decent work with economic growth. And I think that we need to turn that question over quite a few times because to get decent work and economic growth to be possible at the same time, we need a systems view. We need to understand what it is in decent work that allows human ability to prosper and sustainability in the human sense at work I think is about not harming or lessening the motivation of the human workforce because humans are the only part of a work system that doesn't lose value over time as long as they get to keep their health and keep their motivation because that's when the capacity will grow, the competence will grow and possibly all the innovation, creativity and ideas. So we need to figure out how to protect that asset in any workplace. That's why I think it's a very uh, challenging goal, but absolutely a necessary one. I wish he were still with us, but I would so like to have had Hans Rosling with us in that conversation because I just read his memoirs and his understanding of how the world has developed over such a short time uh, period would have been an amazing backdrop to discussing this type of question. What it means to grow and to get better living conditions and what it is in work that makes that possible. So he would be one person I would definitely would I would have loved to have him in that conversation. Uh, but I would also like other people to join. For example, names escape me right now, but I would have loved to avoid an ableist kind of assumption for what decent work is. So I would have liked to invite someone who could tell me what would you need for decent work to be possible and in order to, you know, secure the economic growth by contributing if you're in a wheelchair or if you have some cognitive impairment that could be helped by technology or s something like that. I would have liked to capture those aspects also. So kind of to get the uh, design for all universal design perspective in there. And finally, I think it would be good to have an innovator, uh, someone who works day to day with innovation, who believes everything is possible. Because I think sometimes the problem with being a scientist is you see too many potential problems in the system, but you need someone to break through those walls. And in that case, I would nominate Sophie Lindblom, who is a forerunner for young women in tech and for innovation. Actually, I think it would be very worthwhile to add someone to the equation who knows something about sleep and recovery, because something that is coming in this modern age is the possibility to almost work independently of your body, which of course couples to what I talked about before with making it more of an able place for everyone. But at the same time, should everyone individually be the police of how much they expose themselves to work. So I would have liked to have someone add the perspective of recovery, of sleep, and of maybe stress perspectives. Like how do we make work decent and at the same time make use of everything that could make us prosper even more, but in the end not burn out our, you know, our human abilities, which is what I talked about in the beginning, that as long as we get to keep our health and our motivation, that's when we never lose our value in the system. So I think that for it to come full circle, we would need someone who knows something about that.